Well, for enjoyable, comfortable running, your running shoes should fit a little differently than your casual shoes. And here to help us get the perfect fit is Will Lawrence, an experienced coach and trainer for Run On here in Dallas. Welcome. How are you? It's good to see you. I'm great. Thank now, you. I, I just recently fell in love with Run On because I started getting back into a workout regimen and went in to get new shoes, but I had no idea all the different levels of shoes there were, and then I even needed to be fit for a shoe. So tell us about Run On and what makes y'all different from any other store that sells athletic shoes. Well, um, Run On you know, started back actually in the mid-90s, and we've, uh, we've been around and growing, now have uh, over nine facilities in the, in the Metroplex, and I think it's because, you know, we educate people on, on why they need to get the right shoe. You know, it's not just, yes, you need, you know, this is what you have to do. Why do you need to do that? And that's exactly what y'all did for me when I came in because I remember thinking, okay, I want, I have like a dark pair and I want like a bright pair and maybe I want like a white pair. And so I was going based off of aesthetics. I had no idea that there were certain shoes that fit my sole differently based on where my foot arches. And y'all asked me to take my shoes off and then you watched me walk. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, what are they looking for? Explain this process of when someone comes in and y'all actually kind of look at the way our feet hit the ground. Right. Um, as, as far as fitting, yeah, because that's how most people do pick pick their shoe. Like, oh, that's going to look really good with the new outfit that I just got. At Lululemon, and, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And um, it could be the completely wrong shoe for your foot, for your gait, and that's what we're looking at when we actually have you move in the store, um, depending on how your foot comes into the ground. Some people come down you know, the outside and roll in or pronate. Um, some people supinate, roll outside, and there's different shoes to control that. So, you know, if I roll out and I have a shoe that keeps me from rolling in, that's actually going to push me out of position and can cause injuries. And the right or wrong shoe could really affect our performance in the long run of how well we're performing in the gym or how well we're performing if we're running or if we're training for a marathon, you know, something of that nature, right? Exactly. And, and uh, you know, you, you said, uh, you know, we always tell people that your running shoe should be the largest shoe in your closet. Um, your foot, it, you know, is going to swell. People, you know, wonder like, oh, I've been losing feeling in my toes. We get all sorts of issues in, and it's usually because yeah, you have the wrong shoe. If your shoe's too small, your foot's going to swell when you start working out, and you don't have enough room in, inside of that shoe, depending so, on your foot shape. Would that sometimes, if if I walk in, if I come in to run in and get fitted for a shoe, would I would y'all go, okay, New Balance looks, it, they have the best kind of you know padding and and arch support and whatnot for your type of foot. Would it would it typically mean I could stick to one? brand for the rest of my life or is it uh, then no, how do y'all determine not once set. you look at my arch how, then how do you determine what shoes I need right so you know first things first we're gonna you know find out what size okay because obviously you know uh, if you and most people a, like you said are wearing the wrong size athletic exactly. shoe because I think I'm an seven, 8 I'd wear an 8 but that's not the case right no if you measure at an 8 most likely you're going to be in either an 8 and a half or a 9 um, just depending on, on the shoe that you're wanting once we get that then yeah we can watch you actually move in the store and see if you're going to need a structured shoe if you need a neutral shoe something like that um, a structured shoe is going to be something to wear the, it, the, I, see I would say that the sole is more clunky right. but it's a thicker sole <laughs> it, 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 is, it is and it has it has this what we call posting or you know it has some structure to keep your foot from rolling in okay um, or a neutral shoe that's gonna you know for somebody who just comes straight through when you run. Um, and then on top of that, then what type of acti activities are you doing? Are yes. you going to be? Are you marathon running? Or are you just kind of like casually jogging? Are you exactly. walking Katy Trail? Exactly. If you're, you know, you know depending on how much uh, cushion you're going to want, how much you need, more experienced runners don't really need as much shoe. Um, it's going to be lighter, faster, and, you know, help them, you know, improve times and what they're going to do. But and how then... quickly should we change out our running shoes? Because I know I had to have someone call me out and go, your shoes look disgusting. <laughs> and I was like, well, they're so broken in and they feel perfect and they feel great when I work out. But I need to be on more of a regimen of changing them out how often? Um, the average is usually between three and 500 miles. And I, I know most people aren't necessarily logging how many miles they're getting in no, each day. Um, but, you know, you have a rough estimate. If you're getting in about 15 miles a week, then you can, you know, kind of see where, where you're at. Usually, the most people, it's just kind of a feel thing. Right. Okay, something's not quite feeling quite right. I'm feeling a little bit of pain or discomfort or something like that. Usually, the first place to look, at, if you haven't changed anything up in your regimen, is going to be your shoes. Well, so many great tips. And y'all do so many cool things that run on also. Y'all have, like, running groups that I know meet. And so many great activities have really been a Involved in the community as well, right? Right. Everything from social runs where you know everybody can just come up, 
you know, hang out, everybody takes off, you know, we'll have a set route, um, and then come back and, you know, hang out or, you know, everybody goes to a certain place. I love it. Um, and then everything from a 5K class for, you know, kind of your couch to 5K people just getting going right. all the way up through our marathon. You know, uh, right now everybody's starting to prep for the Dallas. Yeah. So we got a lot of classes going on both in the mornings and the evenings. And one thing I love about Run On is, and you've touched on this, is how educated all of your staff is, that they're really great at being educated at knowing what you need to make sure that you're getting the maximum out of your workouts and out of your runs and out of your training. Exactly. And to keep you safe. That, you right. know, that's that's going to be the biggest thing with your shoe is making sure, you know, the right shoe right. is going to keep you healthy um, and you're not going to get injured. So you can actually continue to, to yes. run as opposed to, you know, I'm going to take a day off and then that day becomes a couple days right. and so on and so forth. Everybody knows how well, that goes. Well, thank you so much. So many great tips, Will. And, of course, if you need more information, you can go to runontexas.com. So many great things there. Okay, coming up next, if you're an aspiring author or maybe think you have a great idea for a book, we are talking about how you can take your idea from concept to the Kindle. Stick around.